social aspect of slams is awesome. Um, in a way, they're like mini conferences between poets. I think using poetry slams as a way to get communities together is one of the best uses of poetry slams. It offsets the nastiness and the competition and the downsides of that by just making sure that by connecting people and bringing people together, you can give them a common thing to work on and a common thing to like be involved in and share. So um, I went to UniSlam and it was in Leicester. I'd never been to Leicester. And even going to there, I met a bunch of new poets from Leicester, also poets from Scotland who I'd not met before, who are now like, you know, good friends of mine and things like that. I love the community building aspects that a slam can have, but it needs to be community first and then competition second and then, you know, poetry above all of that, obviously. In the beginning of slams, in America particularly, um, it was about doing that. And so um, poetry event organisers, they'd come together and they'd hear what these people from a different area were doing. And then they'd try to get some of those people to come to their slams and feature so that you were exposing your audience to a different kind of, a different way of doing poetry, a different, um, uh, yeah, a different yeah, way of doing it. Um, so, I think that's really important. I think if Sam's were doing that a little bit more, it, it would be really useful. I think it's valuable to have different ideas coming in to, to different scenes. What Joelle Taylor has done with Slam Ambassadors is amazing. It's changed people's lives. And yet, yeah, a lot of that is about slamming, but actually, at the heart of that, what you have is someone getting young people together to write in a group of people that changes their lives forever. And we know that, like we know that there's been a lot of young people affected because one person essentially started a slam competition and it's not so much about the slam, it's just about what you can do with poetry. Joelle Taylor has done some fantastic what, pioneering work, you know, in the slam ambassadors and getting young people involved in this amazing if you can make clear and this is in to young people or in a slam night that this is bullshit i've seen really good slam nights that the first thing they say is none of this shit matters it's a farce and then it just the tone of it kind of goes down and no one really cares everyone's getting up because of like end of the day there's a hundred people here whatever it might be and i get to perform to them if you think you know what this is about then you don't understand it <laughs> if you think you understand it you don't know what this is about. <laughs> Sad cuckoo. <laughs> and I have come to know you in your withered ways and motions. Full stop. False heart. And a wind like neat maracas. <laughs> I think, especially considering um, how integrated so many poetry scenes are, I think slams are a very good way to bring in outsiders because, I mean, the likelihood of you getting a, a random poet turning up at an open mic that you've never seen before is very, very different to someone actually signing up for a slam. And I think it encourages a lot of diversity in terms of not just style, but also, you know, where you're from. And people within and without that scene can also have a nice time do all the nice poems. <laughs> there is a really good sense of camaraderie at slams, at some slams, and it does, it does help build a community. Putting a slam in a place is a really easy way to build a poetry scene um, because people are competitive. People go, oh, I'm gonna you know, win this slam and get myself like 20 quid, um, the things I do for 20 quid. Um, and it's a good way of building a community. It's a lot easier than doing an open mic night. Open mic nights have a certain, um, people, see open mic in a certain way and it's hard to get people to come to them. Slams, they're exciting, they're big, they're loud. I think it's a really good thing to build a community. You've got to get people involved in something that, frankly, is a, is a very marginalised part of the culture. Uh, you've got to bring people in, you've got to give them an access at some point to this. And, and if it's a slam, great. I think a lot of my best poetry friendships and relationships have come from slams. Um, I have friends like in America and Australia and here who I would not know outside of slams. Like I just wouldn't have met them. And also the bond you have with people who are slamming, I feel like you go through hell together. So you have this like strength. Um, I feel like when you're slamming on the same stage as someone, there's so much compassion and there's so much care 
and support from other competitors. I've met, I've met some uh, absolutely wonderful people um, at Slams, like uh, notably a guy called Tom Dewey, who is uh, one of my favourite poets of all time. Um, we just met at a poach slam, and he, you know, he blew us all away. And you get talking to him, and then you just, you know, you make you make friends, you make connections. From a purely um, hedonistic point of view of myself as a social animal, I like getting out and meeting other friends of mine who who do stuff like this. Um, so the idea that you might bring uh, whole messes of people together for just an extended time of workshopping poetry and then getting it ready for performance, um, it reminds me of all of the best parts of what I used to do back in the days when I still had time to do it uh, as, as an actor, as, as a participant in student drama and going on tours uh, with, with Ouds and Awful Pie Theatre and various other people. Um, would forge an absolutely incredible sense of solidarity and uh, fraternity. This was you know, something that um, gave a tremendous charge to, to everything that, uh, that, that you encountered in those environments. So the notion that something of that kind might exist for poetry to me is tremendously exciting. It's difficult to understand the dark nature of man. From Ku Klux to Klan to invisible villains inside of Afghanistan, Israel, Palestine, the United States and Iran, North Korean abductions of citizens in Japan, Rockies and Afghans, wars in Pakistan, peace doesn't appear to be a part of the plan. Unmanned drones just miss the Taliban and annihilate the kids who play inside the sand. The best laid plans of mice and man often go awry, it's hard to understand. The blood on the scene resembles a red dress. Sin seeps the soul and it's difficult to redress. If you're going to call it a crime, let's channel Elliot Ness and call it politicians untouchable in the West. I think from a bigger kind of perspective, like with Uni Slam and Brave New Voices, like countrywide competitions and stuff, that's sick. Um, and I feel like that's hard to do without that competitive element. I think Slam is a really great tool um, to get people in the door um, because particularly this event has been really great for networking um, mostly and the workshops as well that we've done. So because everybody has come for the Slam, even though we're not mainly focused on the winning of the Slam itself, it means that there are people from all over the country who we now know are like-minded and into poetry and it gives us an opportunity to learn from professional poets as well. The really good things about slams, such as uh, Uni Slam and when we were at Cupsy, was that we just kind of treated that as, well, we're all here, there's loads of other poets, let's just meet them and chat to them and get to know them because it's a fantastic way for poets to not just meet each other, for, but to see other types of work that they wouldn't normally see and to see stuff that's totally different. And to get inspiration off that, I think a lot of people do their best writings at slams or just after slams when they've just watched such a wealth of different kind of styles and different poems on stage. Um, I think like the best thing that's come out of Uni-Slam and Cupsy for me has definitely been making connections with poets that I would have never met before and uh, definitely seeing different types of poems and seeing different people on stage, yeah. Having been to a Uni-Slam last year, I thought it really worked. There was such a sense of camaraderie and community and I think it can bring people together, definitely. And, and that's what storytelling of all kinds, all art should bring people together. It should unify people. I like the fact that it connects, you know, people from different places, from different poetry scenes and maybe, yeah, with the Unislam, different universities and people with different experiences and writing styles. And I think in a way it it can really create a network of creative people um, who might not have otherwise run into each other. Definitely with UniSlam, getting people from all over the country into one place, getting a huge crowd, seeing all different kinds of poetry from all over the UK, that's absolutely fantastic. I got to compete in UniSlam two years ago. It was absolutely insane. I had no idea how much diversity there was in the scene and it's it was so, wonderful, so inspiring to see. And I know that everyone in the crowd had a fantastic time. It was like four and a half hours and we all still had a really good time. When you get like a bunch of slam teams together, that should be a giant networking opportunity. Like, and it should be a chance to like, you know, make new friends from across the country. Like, UniSlam was great for going down to Leicester and finding out about 
a bunch of poets that I'd never heard of and never would have seen if I hadn't have gone and done Uni-Slam. So I think like poetry slams like that are really good for kind of building that relationship across sort of regions, which is really nice. Without that competitive element, you're not going to draw all these people into the same space. So I think you need it. Um, and I think once you get all those people in that space, once you draw, like as uni slam and as those things are showing, like once you get everyone there, like, oh, you, you come with your team and then you, you meet other people and you're like, oh, okay, this is not like Hunger Games. Even in Hunger Games, like okay. Katniss Everdeen and then the little, um, oh, little black girl, the cute one, the one they stabbed and killed. I was so upset. Um, yeah, but like you had friends in it, um, like you made friends or whatever. So it's a fight to the death, and they're making friends. Um, so if they can do that in a fight to the death, they can do it. It happens. It's going to happen at a poetry slam where you have people who are exploring the world in their words, exploring their emotions, exploring their feelings, exploring what people don't really talk about all the time. Simon says it's not fair that no one listens to him anymore. <laughs> Life used to be so easy. You'd open his mouth and people would just listen. But more recently, Simon has started to feel excluded. Feels offended that people might feel safer with Adam there thinks trigger warnings are for losers and he proudly claims his lack of sensitivities as a personal victory while I would tell him to have some empathy. I was part of Shake the Dust um, and, uh, and, and had, A, I had an absolute blast and B, the eight kids that, um, that I was working with had an absolute blast and the best compliment I ever got um, was from the parent, the mother of one of the guys writing said, if you'd have told me like a month ago my son would be up till 10 o'clock in the morning on his computer, I'd have assumed they were playing games. But him and his friend were coming around arguing about language and things like that and, and it was absolutely brilliant. You know, it gives you chills down your spine to see these kids um, just having their brains completely opened by watching and writing good slam poetry. Um, that I, I, I is, I'm all for, I'm absolutely all for that. I think there comes a point where you stop being a school kid and you have to you know become your own writer your own artist find your own voice um and if, if people want to go and do slams that's fine but i don't think that they should feel that that is the only career option open to them when you have the the teamwork uh, the team competitions particularly is a great way i was actually part of shape the dust in 2012 and just working with those kids and getting them to create create something together was a beautiful thing to watch, really beautiful and, and like any um, artistic endeavour, when you have people to bounce off, you, you create something much better, even if it ends up being your sort of individual thing. Um, so I think it serves a, a, a great purpose there. And then again, because you've got that team community element, that raises you above the competitiveness. Because we've got this kind of thing, we're competing but we're not competing. Because I mean, I'm competitive and yet Comparing myself to other people is the most destructive thing I can do. I've got a friend who just calls it compare and despair. And you know, here at the Fringe, it's so easy to do. If you have a few bad days and you're like, well, they got a five star review and that was a bit shit around the edges that while. And then, you know, and, and all of that. And, and again, learning to take yourself out of that, but still want to better yourself. Holding that paradox or learning that paradox, I think is, is vital. Of the people I've met who enter slams, the competitive edge is there, but there's never been any bitterness that I've seen at the end of the slam. There's never been any, well, I didn't win, you know. And I think that the whole bringing communities together is important. Um, and I think that's a really great thing slams can do. Honestly, I mean, I've never, I, I don't think that poets are particularly cutthroat competitive types. I mean, I think sometimes the way in which the artistic world works, it does pit artists against each other. You know, if slams have high stakes, if they actually have money attached to them, that can make it harder. Um, but that being said, I mean, everyone is always so lovely. I've never left a slam and gone like, oh, they shouldn't have won, I'm really angry, I'm gonna go appeal that decision. Like, no, who are you gonna appeal it to? The slam got like, no. And, and I think people always understand that like, ultimately slams are crapshoots. We do them so that audiences get engaged, so that they have fun, and we do them because we love poetry. I mean, the, there's this mantra, it's not about the points, it's about the poem, and I think that that should be tattooed in every slammer's forehead, you know? Like, it's not about who wins, it's about the fact that you got to meet all these amazing people, that you get to see all this amazing poetry, that maybe some person who's never heard spoken word before went to that slam and went, oh, the guy in round two was ace, and that's all that should matter. He called me baby because fuck you. Dear America, 
One, the first time I saw my father cry, his tears were your blood, and your blood was stained with the ancestry too white, blood too red, two, two. red, <laughs> period. I am woman. I am bleeding. I am sidewalk spit, dirty. Soiled. Baseball. I am metaphor. <laughs> Fuck you. Three. What is black and white and red all over? America. America. <laughs> Four. My body is not an apology. My tongue is not an excuse. My womb is not an accident. Five. Five. They told me my pretty was just sleeping, like Jesus when he slept and dreamed about America. If this, this is, is the American, American dream, dream, pinch me, cause, cause I need to wake, wake up. Somewhere in America, all the children are taking drugs. Somewhere in the world, other children are making drugs. Somewhere in this room, some drugs are making children. <laughs> Sex. Six. Six. Sex is a beautiful car crash. Don't tell me I am too straight or too white or too man because it is working just fine for me. I am just as straight and just as man and just as white as Jesus. Seven, fuck you. Eight, Eight. I am gold dust. I am backstage pass. My eyes are Twitter blue. I am simile. Like me on Facebook. <laughs> Nine is a whisper I'll never remember. Nine is a whisper I'll never forget. Nine is a whisper I'll never repeat. Nine is the first time I saw my father cry. He, he called, called me baby, baby and I cried like the baby he called me. Ten, Ten. we are the babies America warned us about. <laughs>